Tractate Bava Kama, page 21. Today, first we're going to discuss with the subject called Zenehene Veze Lochaser. This one, let's call it name. The first one is Reuven, derived benefit. Shimon did not suffer a loss. An example to that. Reuven owns a property, meaning, for example, a, ho a home. He went away. Shimon had access to his home. And Shimon, while Reuven was away for a month, Shimon used that house for himself. Reuven comes back and he said, I want you to pay me rent. Reuven never rent his home. Shimon get used to rent houses. So the question is, Shimon said to Reuven, I derive benefit by being here. You not suffer any loss by having me using this home. So, the question is, if he needs to pay him and how much he needs to pay him. Another subject we're going to discuss is called Me'ila Behekdesh, meaning you have an item that belongs to the institution. For example, somebody donates a car in our days, and that car belongs to Yeshiva, for example. Now, Reuven come in and he use the car for his personal needs. So there are different phases with that. One, if someone stole an item that belongs to the Hegdesh, belongs to the, um, um, for example, non-profit organization. Another example is it derived benefit that has more than Shve Puta, they have more than some value. So based on Gemara in Bava Metzia, page 99b, we're going to derive a juxtaposition to our discussion, which is the law of damage and damage. If you recall, yesterday we discussed the Ktsota Choshen, which again is part of our discussion. If you have a building with many tenants, and the fellow that live top of the roof, right, the top floor, has some leaks issue from the roof. So it's wet, and he called that company that does a, um, for example, if it's a flat roof, so you need to have all these special materials that need to be used. And he sued, he called upon other tenants who claim that it's not their responsibility for the roof. So the question is, if you have a building with several tenants, can you impose equally on every tenant in every floor to pay for the big expense of the roof or not? Furthermore, the question is, if the room, let's say, or not even room, let's say a apartment, we discussed it yesterday, we mentioned the book by Rabbi Grossman in Israel. He was asked, um, builder have development, he built a building, and he sold papers. In Israel, in many countries, this is common. You get the estate, you get the land, and you file all the specifications. It tells you X amount of time, let's say several years, to build a building. Meanwhile, you give a special deal to, to, to people if they buy it now. So you have a fellow, let's call him Shimon, and Shimon paid the builder, the Ruven, four payments. He paid him upon signing, he paid him when they start building, he paid him when they already see the building ready, and he made the three out of four payments. Then he turned the last payment before turning the key, and all of a sudden you have a difficulty, financial difficulty, to pay the last payment. So, Reuven said, look, it's ready. Shimon said, look, 
I, it's hard for me now. So Ruven went ahead and he rented year and a half pass, and Shimon gave him the money. Ruven gave him the key, he has the apartment. Shimon comes in and he said, this is not fresh brand new apartment, it's already used apartment. This is not the condition that I, I thought, it's a different, it was already, you know, even um, the builder painted it, said, well, it's not the same as a fresh, it's like you're taking car from the shop versus you're taking car that it's used, right? So it's already different. So Shimon sued Ruben and he said, I want you to pay me the rent that you rent this. So the Ksoda so Hoshan have a discussion if retroactively, since Ruben already made three payments, and since he is now the owner, can you go by the retroactive act and say that he have an access at least to part of that rent? Why? Because the reality is that he is the owner. He was the owner because he made most of the payment. The fact that he has financial difficulty to make the last payment, right, doesn't mean that renting it, he has zero income, especially since he complete the payment in a later time. So, as we said, today we're going to study page 21 in Tractate Bhavakama. We'll start on page 20b, 18 lines from the top of the page. Tashema. This is a proof from Tractate Bhava Metzia, page 117. Habayit veha'aliyah shel shnayim. So we have a ground story, an upper story. You have the ownership, good morning of ownership by two different people. So, imagine you have a home, right? Two owners, and all of a sudden what happened is, Shena flu, that something happened, and the building collapsed, okay? Amar bala liyale bala bayit not. So the one who owns the upper part, said the other party that he needs to rebuild the foundation in order for him to build the upper part. But the other party, the owner, doesn't want to build. So the second floor can build what? Both the first and the second floor, right? Now, that's the Rashi in Baba Metziah 117 tells us that he has the right to do it up to the top ceiling. Ve'yoshevba, and he dwell in that estate, the house, ad ten lo et yetziotav, until, how far? Until he pay him all these expenses. So, and only then he will be required to vacant the lower story of the house and build the upper part. So what do we derive from that? Yet Yetziotav, all those expenses of the owner that involve with the building of the lower part. Who the Mechayev Labal Abayit? Haskaro, but the rent, he cannot impose on him. Shmamina, we derive from here, Zenene, this one derived benefit, Veze lo chaser, and that one does not suffer a loss, the one who drive benefit is exempt, right? So it's Shmamina, Zenene, Veze lo chaser, Patu. Why? Because he derived benefit, the, the upper part. Why? Because if he's not dwell there, he, can, he need a place to live in, he will go elsewhere. Versus the owner is not suffering a loss. Why? Because he just expresses his wishes not to build at all. So because the owner owned that estate even without the other party paying the expenses, so, what do you see here? Um, 
that that it's applied the 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 zen and the zero chazor shane atam the beta le aliyah mishta abed the reality is that the house is subjugated to the upper story why because you have to have the foundation when you build the building and that's the the foundation in, uh, you cannot build second floor without the foundation of the building so therefore the upper part party has the right to dwell in that estate until the other party pay him the expenses so the 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 nimuke yosef and uh, ramban the others ask um, why the bet deen the obedi court cannot impose on him to build so the upper part can live there so one option is the ramban in baba metzia 116b said that the owner is away so the bed din doesn't want to touch his estate if he's not there the other said the the, the mukher said that that he owns just that part meaning the second part doesn't cannot be accessed cannot be subjugated because of the other party but anyway you derive from that this question we asked earlier the the neighbors if the upper story needs to to have a roof repair if he can impose on other parties so in very general for sure there is a book mishpatea torah and others they have discussions where and where how but in general it is incumbent upon other tenants or other people to pay for the roof why because the building is one entity number one number two the leaks that come from the roof from the ceiling can go to other part of the building can ruin the building okay um, so because of that in general halakha even one party is the direct contact with the roof and the other party are not as far as fixing the roof it's uh, it in general has to be sure for sure there are cases that not but in general yes Tashma, Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Af ze hadar b'chatzar chavero, Shelo midato tzarich lalot lo sacha. So he said, even the one who live in the estate of his fellow, so he needs to pay, Shema mina, ze nene, ve ze lo chaser chayav. Remember the case we said earlier? The fellow, again, Reuven, he owns a house. He's not using that house. Shimon has the key to that house. Ruven went to China for two months. Mm. Shimon used it. Shimon used to rent houses. So Ruven wants him to pay him a rent. Shimon said, you, I derive benefit, you're not missing anything. It's not that you um, um, need to pay mortgage or you have any expense involved with me being there. Right? So they said, here, yes, he needs to pay him. So they said, now, sometimes, again, as we said, it's dependent on the case because it can be that he gave him the key, right? To give him the key sometimes to watch. And it wasn't clear between the party if he can use or not. And they just something happened between them and all of a sudden he changed and he wants him to pay, right? So we need to know the case. But in general, Shaneata Mishum Shachrerut Shachrurita De Ashyata. Why? In those days, they used to have a um, furnace that um, um, uh, heat the homes, right? So, so the house, the, the walls, needs to repaint because all the smokes that came from the furnace that create a dark spot on the walls and the roof, etc. So therefore, he feels that something is missing. That's what we mentioned yesterday, the Ketzot Achoshen. But he said, since the status change from a fresh, brand new house to a used house, so therefore that has already changed the status, uh, so it needs to pay um, uh, because it is chaser, it is um, missing something that used to before. Now, <coughs> 
blackening the walls is example. For sure, there are many other examples that Reuven can claim that this is not the way I, I have it before. Shlachu Abey Rabbi Ami. Amar v'chima asalo uma chisro uma iziko. What exactly he missed, right? For example, if he used that house, the other party was in China, right? And he's not using that house. So what exactly he's missing? You're not even aware, sometimes you're renting, and you not even see that the person used it. So they said, Come and, and, and study it. They sent him people to ask him a question again and again and again. He's like, what do you want from me? You come again and again to ask me a question. If I have an answer, don't you think I'll answer you? Itma, Rav Kahana Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Eino tzarich la'ut lo sachar. So one said that he does not need to, um, to, um, to pay him rent. Rabbi Abar Amar Rabbi Yochanan, tzarich la'ut lo sachar. He hold that he does need to pay him rent. <coughs> so he said, Amar Rav Papa, the Rabbi Abau love be ferush itmar, ela michlala itmar. So he said, what he said is not explicitly, but he said the inferred from Rabbi Abau draw from something that Rabbi Yochanan said in different contexts. So now we're going to bring a Mishnah in Tractate Meila in the page 19 and 20. And here we talk about the misuse of trust by the trustees meaning you have a non-profit organization. In those days it was a temple. Nowadays you can have any non-profit, right? So people donate things. So I used earlier example of car, right? But it can be any item that use, or in our case misuse, that it was consecrated. Consecrated meaning you take this car and you said it belongs to yeshiva. So it's no longer use, right? So he said here, Natal even o kora shel hegdesh. If someone take a, a stone or a cross beam that had been consecrated, ma'al is not violated the prohibition of misuse a consecrated property. Why? Taking the stone or beam, it's not effectively remove it from uh, within the jurisdiction of the temple property or in our case can be a those non-profit organization because it's still under that control of the temple treasury. But then, netana lechavero, if you hand it over to another entity, hu ma'al, he is misused because now it changed the status from consecrated to a non-consecrated. So we mentioned earlier the ritva in tracted Bava Metziah, page 99b, he explained that when it's come to the law of misuse, there are two different options. One, if you remove, you relocate something from Hegdesh by taking something, right? Gzeila. Or another option, you derive benefit that carry more than Pruta, which means, let's say you derive benefit for something that have the worth of ten dollars and up, right? So therefore, it's already in violation. So now the second one, the second entities which has already changed to be chulin, to be unconsecrated um, a item, so it's not in a state of misuse. Bna'a letoch beito, if the other party, let's call him Shimon, he built it within his domain, his house. So he's not considering um, misuse until he dwell there in a value that have more than pruta. So, in, um, so the, the Torah tells us in the book of Vayikra, Leviticus 5, that one who misuse needs to pay back plus a fine, chomesh and needs to bring an offering of misuse. But anyway, Amar Shmuel, Vehu she'enicha al pi aruba, 
So here, you, you talk about um, Shmuel that said that he placed it at the top of an opening in the roof to close it up, but he did not affix it to the structure. All of that without the consent of the Hegdesh. So what do you see? ויתיב רבי אבא הוא כמד רבי יוחנן וכמר בשמי דשמול זאת אומרת הדר בחצר חברו שלו מדעתו צריך לראות את השכר as we said the original case if שמעון live in the house apartment that belongs to Reuven without Reuven full awareness and concern so even is nothing there to claim in a sense of losing right but he still if he dwell there with something that's worth value, he misused the property. Veshatakle and Rabbi Yochanan was a uh, akuyas, right? He displayed equanimity, he didn't say anything. Iu savar, Rabbi Abau hold, mi deshatik, by the merely fact that Rabbi Yochanan kept quiet, modele, he agreed with what Shmuel said. And the truth is, velohi. Ashguche lo ashgachba. The truth is that he simply paid no attention to him because there is no proof whether from the, that Mishnah. Ki de Rabba, as Rabba said, the Marabba, when a person drives benefit. So, uh, so, in general, the Rashash said, Rabbi Yachanan didn't say to Rabbi Abba that what, the, what uh, Shmuel said is not true because the Gemara in Baba Metziah 99b said that Shmuel retracted his view. But here, the Amar Rabba, Hegdesh Shelo Midat. So someone benefiting from the temple treasury without its knowledge. So Rabbi Chaim Ibrisk, and you see the same in the book called the Tivot Mishpat. he asked a question, how come we juxtapose the two? You're talking about the law of misuse entity, and originally speaking, our discussion, destructed, is the law of damage, damages, which is the monetary disputation. How do you compare the two? <coughs> when it's come to Isure Anaha, the prohibition against driving benefit from something. So it doesn't matter how much you drive benefit from that. The, the merely fact that you have benefit is a problematic. For example, if it's a mixed mi milk and meat, Pasar Bechalav, or the law of Hametz, all of that. So how come the Tivot HaMishpat ask the Gemara compare, juxtapose between Hekdesh, mm -hmm. something that belongs to the temple treasury, that you have the prohibition against driving benefit, you in charge for the charity fund, you in charge for the temple treasury, you in charge for whatever it is that doesn't belong to you, that belongs to the non-profit, right? And you derive personal benefit, that's one entity versus our discussion that law between injured party and damage that it's a two different things that you need in order to impose upon one party to pay the other party you have to the burden of proof to say, to prove that the other party uh, uh, suffer a loss in order to collect fund so Abraham Brisk said that we derive from that a very important foundation to understand the law of misuse item which called the law of meila he says, when it's come to a misused item, it's structured the same as gazel, the same as law of stealing. What does that mean? The, uh, here, when we talk in the law of misuse, is um, structure in a way that um, when you have isura na'a, like, like the prohibition against driving benefit for milk and meat or chametz, is total different structure than the law of misuse. Misuse, in that sense, can be compared to the law of injured party damage and damagee, and not compared to the law of misuse for other things. That's the ghetto, the yesod, that Chaim Brisk explained. Page 21, Kehediot Midaat Name. So here we have a Tosfot, and Rashba, the question is this, the owner of the Hegdesh, when it's all said and done, is the Almighty. The owner of that home or apartment, it's human, 
someone who went to China, right? In a sense, God knows clearly what's going on. You are using something that belongs to God is a problematic, right? Correct. Can you compare it, the Rashba asked, to a fellow, right? Because when we talk of the case that, that Shimon rent without payment, meaning use the house, the apartment of Reuven when he was in China, right? So what do you say? You, in the quandary if it's right or not to impose upon him to pay rent, right? שלח לרבי אבא בר זבדה למרי בר מר, בא אמן אמר אבונה, הדר בחצה חברו שלו מדעתו צריך לא לשחר או לא, או לא, או לא. So let's again for those who come late. The point is, you have, let's say, you have in, in Florida, okay, you own a apartment, and you give it to your friend who live, not, let's say you own it in Boca, and you have in Delhi Beach a friend, they have the key. You just keep it by them, they have the access. All of a sudden it turns, you came there, and some neighbor told you that they use it, right? You came to them, your friends, and you said, how come you use it? And they said, you didn't lose anything. Now they live by rent, so in a sense they save the rent by using for several months your apartment. They said, look at your apartment, nobody knows. If that person does not tell you, you never know that we use it, right? You said, wait a second, I didn't give you permission to use it, I just gave you the key, right? So you should pay me rent, right? So that's the question. So they said, So Ravuna passed. So this is the son sent on behalf of his great father, Ravuna, Mishmei the Rav, on behalf of Rav. If someone dwell in a house of his fellow without his consent, he doesn't need to pay the rent. But if you rent a house from Reuven, the Shimon, so one who rents a house from Reuven pays the rent to Shimon. You remember always, we use Reuven and Shimon, that's the, just names of entities, right? Shimon Ma'evidite, what Shimon involved here? Ha'chekemar nimtza ba'abayit shel Shimon ma'ler sacha. Which means that the house belong to Shimon, then the tenant must pay Shimon the rent. So the Gemara said, Tarte, you have here two rulings that contradicted each other. So in my booklet, in my contrast, I dwell pages upon pages of this Rashi. Because Rashi said to her here, beat me a klomar tarte mile kamar de satra na adade. You have here two statements that contradicted each other. So I brought here the Reb Shimon Shkop. Reb Shimon Shkop, Siman Kafot Bet. He explained the Tosfot here. It's called Ribui Mamon. What does that mean, Ribui Mamon? Shimon basically needs to rent a place. He needs a place to live. So by the fact that he dwell in the house of Reuven, his bank account increase. Why? Because otherwise he will pay rent elsewhere. So therefore there is a din called Mishtar Shelei, and he needs to pay it. That's Gemara in Chulin 131. But now the question is how far you go with that? Because the, the argument here is what do I miss? What do you miss? Right? What, what, what I do to you, apartment, to your house, that you see any difference? You see any, any... Mm -hmm. So you have the Chelkat Yoav in Choshen Mishpat Simantet that he, he again argue, he bring a source for Gmar Baba Batra, Chazkat Tashmishin, you have Osamech, you have Shita Mikubeset, you have Nachla David. But I try to prove that it's a subject, no exaggeration, for hours that we can discuss this argument between the rabbis, if and if yes, how much you need to pay based on this discussion, and for sure, Ein kan hamakom leha'arich. This is not the place that we can drag more than the short Dafyomi session, you know. Anyway, Hakaima le'agra, 
הלוקאי מלא אגרא, so but the idea is the argument it's standing for rent or it's not a rent, why? Because Reuven claim how many people you guys know that they have a place and they don't want to rent it. They have it as investment, they keep it whatever it is, they pay or they don't pay mortgage and they don't, they want it for retirement, they want it for fun, they want it for second house, right? You have a house elsewhere and it's just standing there, right? So the, the big question is if you went rented once for all kind of reasons, you need the money, you need to pay a mortgage or other reasons, right? But if it's a state that's never been for rent, so you, you, this is the question. Can you claim now that you want to rent for that or not? It man, I'm a rabbi here, but Ravina Marav. ואמר להם הרבי חייב הרבי נמר רב הודא, הדר בחצר חברו שלא מדעתו אינו צריך לעלות שכר, וזה זוכר בית בני העיר מעלה שכר לבעלים. Again, the same notion. Generally speaking, the rabbi argues that the Shimon have a lot of claim to say, look, you, you never rented. And yes, I gained something instead of me paying rent elsewhere, but you gave me access, so why you want to rent? Right? So they said, Be'alim ma'ya v'ditayu. Ha'chik k'amar, nimtze'u lo be'alim, ma'alim la'im sachar. Okay. So again, tarte. Ha'dekayim ala agra, ha'dekayim ala agra. So the same notion, the same, if that estate was once, or in general, a state that for rent, for lease, or not. Amar rab s'chor, amar avun, amar rab, adar b'chatsar v'rosh lo midato, em tzachar lo sachar m'shmish nemaru, hushia yukat sha'ar. So it means, sometimes he claim, you know, otherwise it's a ghost house, right? So I went there and I live there, right? Life to it. Yes, not everyone goes alone, but I show you the argument here. Amar mar barava shil didi chazali, umenagach ki tora, you should remember. 1800 years ago they suffer from demons. You see so many stories in the Talmud. So here we said that it was a real ghost house, it was a real demons there, and he saw it, that he was like using goring like an ox. Anyway, another reason tried to exempt him from payment. Rabbi Yosef Arar, Beitam Yati Yati. You know, once I was a rabbi in a congregation in New Jersey. I have a guy who used to own a big uh, furniture chair, chain. So he used to come to my Torah classes early in the morning. So uh, we discussed at that time the story between Yosef and his brother, if they seen or not seen. So after like an hour argument, he stood up and he says, I want to hire those rabbis to be my lawyer. <laughs> he said, they are amazing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway, Rabbi Yosef Amar Beitam Yatva Yatva. Rabbi Yosef said, an inhabitant house remain habitable. So it means uh, people fix it, people take care of that because otherwise it's a ghost house, right? My benai, what's the real difference between the two explanations? Ika benai of the kamish tamesh be betzive betzivna. So again, those days, but you can compare it to other days. There are those days they use it for for what? For wood. Use it to uh, to to have a straw. That's the way they use it to either um, uh, storage or other purposes. So therefore, um, he needs to pay versus if nobody lives there. Um, again. Nobody lives there, is, is, it can be go the other way around. Nobody lives there, says, I do you a favor. You know what? Thieves can come, uh, w uh, water, fire can come in, damage. This is a ghost house. I did a favor by dwelling there. And there are people in our world that give the key, the access to their estates, and as people turn on the light sometimes, make noise some outside, uh, put a park, park there, you know, how many times people say, park in my garage, so people think that someone is here because I'm going away. How Gavra, true story, the bana apanda akilka diatmi. Person build a mansion on the, on the garbage heap, right? That belongs to an orphan. Agbe Rav Nachman apadne min. Rav Nachman was a dear authority in so many cases in the Talmud, the head of the court. So he basically confiscated his mansion from him because he did not pay the owner of the property. לימא כסבא רב נחמן, הדר בחצר חברו שלא מדעתו צריך לעלות שכר, so he maybe hold that if one dwell in the other parties without his consent, so he need to pay him. Why? Because that garbage heap 
wasn't for rent. But Rav Nachman, even with that property's condition, um, he holds that's Gemara in Baba Metziah, 101, those orphans cannot uh, pay it, um, or the Rosh said, but the, the, the value of the, the, the building. Anyway, Hahu Mi'ikara, that garbage heap, Mi'ikara Karmenai Habudai Rebbe. The beginning, which was the Karmenai, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's the name of a nation. V'yavul liyotme, the Varmuad, used to pay the orphans a little bit. A very small amount of money. Amar lezi paisin liyotme. So give something to them. So in order, the, the, the Tumad Adeshan said, in order to have a reconciliation without going to a whole notion of suing and court, etc. Velo ashgach. He didn't uh, pay heed to his word. So therefore, Agbi Rav Nachman apan neminei. So that's the reason why he imposed and confiscated it from him. Why? Because Tumad Adeshan said, he, since he doesn't go for the good reconciliation of this orphan to pay them something, so therefore we derive from that the exemption of this one derived benefit and this one was not uh, losing anything. It's not because that the owner forgive for the other party for driving benefit, because young orphans are not bnei mechila, are not in a sense of forgiveness, the Ramah said, but that if the Karmanayim wasn't lived there, then you cannot impose upon um, the owner of that um, mansion to, to pay them. Anyway, Rabbeinu Yonah in Bava Batra 4 explained it more. Kitzad Mishlemet Mashanenet. So that's the Mishnah said, how? What circumstance that the owner of the animal pay the benefit that his animal drive? Amar Rav, Ube Mechazeret. Ube Mechazeret. So it means that the animals pull out the head from that Rachava in order to eat their fruits. So even if she stand inside the Rachava, she needs to pay the damage. Shmuel Amar Afilu Machzeret, Nami Patu. So the Gemara asks, Ul Shmuel Hechev Mashkara Lad Mechayev, how according to Shmuel a person liable to pay, which means what circumstance you t you, you, you talking about. So they said, Kegon de Shavkach de Shavkta Lirchava, the Azla Vekama Bitzirchava. You have here that she left that street. And she went and stood on the side of the street. So you have those who report this type of talk, and in a different one, independent one. So animal turn ahead and get the food mm -hmm. at the side of the street. So I've said that he's liable, Shmuel said not. Shmuel said that Shmuel said that he's liable to pay what is damaged. Give me an example. Again, she was in the street, and she went and stood the side of the street. If they, they, um, they, they um, stand on the front of the store, she pays what she has um, benefit. Give me an example. If she turns her head, what she's derived benefit, yes. What she's damaged, she's not. So said, who motive la vum farekla? So Rav Nachman bar Yitzchak ask, and he also the same way answer. The kaima bekeren zavit. So here you have a mavoi. In that the 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 store stand side of the corner. So if the animal enter from the large one to a small one. So he touched that produce in the side of the store and without bringing back a head. So Rab said that the only payment will be what she is benefit, um, but nothing else. Another option, another explanation, disputation between Rab and Shmuel. Ika de Amri, machazeret kule alma So the, there is another option that said, that when she turned her head and eat from what it was on the side, everyone agreed that she's liable for damages. If someone, the disputation, if someone set aside for or part something from his domain for a public domain, and that's the way we understand the disputation.
Oh, my Rabbi Lushnol Machzed. Rabbi said the Mishnah speaks only if she turns her head to get the food. Aval Makze Makom Mirshutol Irshut Arabi. If someone a, a dedicated a location from his domain um, to use for the public domain. So you see here that that animal eats the food uh, that he is left there, so it's not liable for damage. Ushmuel Amar Afilu Maksim Akom Rishudo Rishudo Rabbi Moshe said still core liability of damage um, even if he set aside part from his domain, the public domain. So the Gemara asks. Leima bebor birshuto kamif legei. So they said, maybe you have disagreement with regard to the question of damage, that if it's a pit that one dug inside one's own domain, and then declare that are, that area is ownerless. Rav Amar Patu, kasavar bor birshuto chayab. Rav says that the owner of the animal is exempt from, uh, for eating the produce. And because he holds that pit, you know, that within his own property, he is liable for any damage that caused by the pit. So, so the same way is the produce is viewed as is in a public domain, and the animal's owner is exempt. Shmuel Amar Chayav Kasevar Bo Brishudo Patu says that it's exempt. It's a Marla Rav Leolam Imalachav said you should say Bealma page twenty one B Bealma in general. If someone dig bo birshuto pit in his property, so then he declare ownerless. Patur is exempt. Why? Because the Torah imposed. Rashi explained only the pit bo birshuto rabim. It's in a public domain. That's Rabbi Ishmael explained. We will see it in page fifty. V'shanei acha de amar lav kol v'kim minach de mikar patul leperutach lirshuto rabim. You cannot bring to proximity your produce to public domain. Mechay patul leTorai. So you, therefore you impose upon my oxen. For eating it, so Ushmuel Amar be'alma bo b'rishuto chayav. The Bishla Mabori kala memar la'avadate el aperot mi kala memar la'avadate achazelu. You see it. Lema machzeret tanai de tanya achla mitoch achavam mishlem mar shenenet mitzid achavam mishlem mar shazik de brab meiv rab yuda rab yosef rab lazarim and dar kalecholal lealech. They said that they 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 uh, it's not the way. To eat, but to walk. So now the Brayta bears clarification because Rabbi Yosi and Itana Kama, the view of Rabbi Yosi followed Rabbi 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 Yuda. Ela Machzeret Ikabenayu. The difference: Itana Kama Savar Machzeret Nami Meshalem Mashenet. Rabbi Yosi Savar Meshalemet Mashezika. So he hold that today Machzeret must pay what she is benefit, and Rabbi Yosi hold that he, she needs to pay what she is damaged. The Gemara said, "Lo, the kula alma machzeret ikerav ikeshmul, ve'achar ubiyer b'sde acher kamif lige." That's what the Torah said in regard to Shen in the book of Shmuel, chapter twenty-two. Mar sabat tanakam ahol ubiyer b'sde acher v'lo b'shut arabim. Tanakam ahol that that applies to ubiyer b'sde acher. It's a not in the public domain. Mar sabar Rabbi Yosi hol ubiyer b'sde acher v'lo b'shut amazik. So not in the domain of damage, which is the owner. Of the cow, so the gemara. So what do you see? So even she ate from the rachava, it needs to pay the damage. So he said, "Bereshut amazik lema pirach bereshut achmabai." He says, uh, what, "What is your fruits doing in my domain?" So, so since he can, um, for this vara, he can exempt him. So why you need the special pasuk? So we the you have to say that that's applied to Shen in the public domain. The disputation between Tanakam and Rabbi Yossi is uh, the din of machzeret ela. The Ilfa of Rabbi Yosheya is Benayu. So Ilfa of Rabbi Yosheya, so Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yosheya disputed, but the, the, the rule of Ilfa, which is in a page we studied in the previous page, page twenty, if you have animal that ate on the top of her fellow, uh, the, the other one in the public domain, so you need to pay full damage. And that's Rabbi Yosheya. If you remember, we said that animal like goat and other jump in a public domain and ate, so then ate from the kupa, so you need to pay chetzi half hepenezik. Rabbi Meir said that anyway. Rabbi Yossi said you have to go if it's a regular manner of eating that or not a regular manner. And that's the famous Rosh Bar. Let's conclude with Chavot Yair. There is a book called Chavot Yair, and he has a question. It may sound ancient, but soon you see there's a lot of applications. Those days used to how they used to sell milk. So you used to have a big um, um, car, big. Um, 
wagon. A person carried carry the wagon and he brought it with his horses. And then it was a huge, um, like container, huge, big. And they have like old time machines and that used to produce the milk. So sounds maybe awkward, but that's happened. It's a, it was a lawsuit at that time. It was a fellow, let's call him Reuven. Reuven owns the milk. The milk meaning the, the machines, the one who produce milk and everything involved with that, standing there. Shimon owes uh, on roosters and chickens. Twelve dead chickens found in that milk place that belongs to Shimon. they jumping, they're hopping, and one morning they came in, boom. So Shimon takes Ruven to court, and he said that um, he wants the compensation for the twelve chickens. Ruven sued Shimon, and he says, you didn't watch your chickens, and they damaged my container, my milk, right? Now, do you treat it as a pit in the public domain? Why? Because um, uh, the place that Ruven put his milk was in the public, right? So, here he goes, a long response, the heights of the container, how far it is, so how far they can say that it's unusual or atypical for the chicken to jump and to enter there if it's the considering in the domain of the injured party, Bereshut and Isaac, or is in a public domain. Anyway, the Chavot Yair have a long response are based on our sugiya.